I want to stay on the issue of justice, but I want to take you to Venezuela, where there are new twists and delays in the trial of opposition leader Leopoldo Lopez. Lopez has been behind bars for nearly six months, accused by the Venezuelan government of inciting violence at anti-government protests back in February. The latest delay in his trial came this week, when the judge once again rejected evidence and several witnesses the defense wanted to present. Today, Lopez and his lawyers are waiting to hear if that decision is even legal. Lopez supporters say all of this is just more proof that he can't get a fair trial in Venezuela. His next scheduled date in court, the 28th of August. Joining me now from Los Angeles, the president and CEO of the Human Rights Foundation, Thor Halverson. He is also the first cousin of Leopoldo Lopez. Thor, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Jose. As you know, human rights activists around the world have been closely watching this case, and Lopez himself is calling the trial, quote, an execution wall. What is your reaction to the court once again banning all the defense evidence for the second time now? They're not allowing the press in there. They're not allowing reports out of there. What's your reaction to all this? Well, the, the, uh, this case from the very beginning, they started off by accusing him of murder and accusing him of uh, terrorism. And then they ratcheted back uh, the accusations after they looked at the evidence and realized that there is no evidence of that. If anything, there's evidence of Lopez going on, um, going on, taking a microphone and calling for uh, non violent conflict, calling for peaceful protest. We just saw the images in Ferguson, Missouri, uh, about people marching. That is what Leopoldo Lopez called for, protest marches against the government. Uh, in every democratic country, the people should have a right to protest. They should have a right to redress their grievances. In Venezuela, that lands you in jail and in a kangaroo court where there is no independence and the court follows the dictates of the president. That's what's going on in the case of Leopoldo Lopez. Now, the, Thor, the government insists that Lopez and other opposition leaders are waging a war against it. They frequently assert opposition forces want to kill President Maduro and topple a democratically elected government. Do they have a point? Should the government be worried? There's no evidence that anyone is trying to plot to kill Nicolás Maduro. They're constantly bringing out these fake plots. Under Chávez, it was one or two hundred times that they accused all sorts of people of uh, plotting to kill the president. It, it's just smokescreen. Imagine again, if, if in, the, in a country like the United States, people said that anyone and everyone who's protesting in Ferguson, Missouri, for a redress of their grievances, is plotting to, to destroy the governorship or is plotting to go against certain political leaders. It's just a a smoke screen, a smoke screen to cover up the fact that Venezuela has descended into a dictatorship and that it is being run by people who, despite sitting on masses and masses of oil wealth, um, have led the country into poverty. So, Thor, where is that money? Because Venezuela has the largest oil reserves in the globe, and yet there's no toilet paper in that. The government has said that in the past what they inherited was a disaster from the rich people that kept all the money and didn't give it to the poor. Well, that's a very that's a that's a, a, a very good red herring. Uh, they've had 15 years of government. When they came into government, the price of oil was seven dollars a barrel. Um, while they've been in government, the price of oil has gone to 100 to 150 dollars a barrel. So the very idea that they have not had enormous amounts of income is absolutely absurd. Uh, where where that money is is simple. A lot of it's in Switzerland. A lot of it's in American banks, in bank accounts being held by cronies of the government. A lot of it is, uh, has been handed out and doled out as bribes at the, at the level of the UN and at the OAS to member countries. So Chavez gave away, for instance, $100 billion in foreign aid. Um, and this wasn't foreign aid. This was, I'm going to give you some so that you vote for me. I'm going to give you some so that whenever something comes up at the UN, you vote in our favor. Venezuela has spent lots and lots of money buying favor abroad. And the people who have suffered the most have been the poor of Venezuela, who, pro who were promised a revolution, who were promised a, an increase in their livelihood, an increase in their standard of living, and who, in fact, have received a situation where you can't even buy toilet paper. You can't That's get true. sugar. That's you true. can't get flour. Sure. You have got to be in line for hours to get the most basic needs. And yet, this is supposed to be a government of the people. Thor Halverson, thank you so much for being with us this morning from Los Angeles. Thanks.